Victoria from Cozy and Country here in partnership with Cozy Owl. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make candles using soy wax. But first I'm going to give you a little bit of background on soy. Now soy wax is probably the most popular wax used with candle makers at this moment. Probably because it is a healthier option and it's a cleaner option in comparison to paraffin. This is because it's been developed from vegetables so that makes it a natural product and it's a renewable product. However, like anything, it comes with its problems when you are using it. Such as when the wax is cooling, you need to be careful because it can be prone to frosting on the vessel, which kind of looks like little snowflakes along the inside of the vessel. And sometimes it can also be prone to adhesion problems, which just look like little wet spots. But don't worry about it. I'm here to show you how to make candles using soy wax with no problems. I'll give you all the tips that you need to be able to avoid them. So let's get going. So I have here 800 grams of soy container wax. I have my containers here and we've gone for the white frosted ones. I also have my wick centering tools just here. I also have some wicks. 100 ml of red roses fragrance oil, some glue dots, my melting pot and my electric weighing scale. Now, for this, I'm going to use the full 800 grams in this bag. Um, just because the containers that I have, I have three of them and they all hold 30 centiliters of wax. So this is gonna be a perfect measurement for them and I won't have any wax left over even after a, a second pour. So once you're all measured out, I'm going to pop the wax just onto a medium heat, just in a, um, in a pan of boiling water. Um, so just keep giving it a really good stir around. It's got quite a high melting point, so it will take a little while, but don't worry. Just keep coming back to it and giving it a good stir um, and make sure you keep breaking it up. One thing that I do want to mention, it's a little fun fact. Um, soy wax is never entirely pure. On its own, it doesn't make a good candle wax, so in order for it to burn well, it is refined with a number of additives. So just a little fun fact for you there. Now, while I leave the wax to melt through, um, I'm just gonna quickly wash my containers. It's always worth doing this. Now, I know these ones are frosted, so you won't see the outside of them. Um, but if you just give them a good wash out, get rid of any muck that might be inside them, it also does warm the jar up a little bit, which is great. Um, it does help with any of the um, frosting or adhesion problems uh, that you might find with soy wax. So it is always worth getting your containers nice and warm after you've given them a good wash. So containers all dry. I'm just going to quickly stick my wicks inside. So take your glue dots, Pop it just onto the base of the wick here and make sure it's nice and stuck. Straighten out the wick if it is a little bit bent and then just take off the other side and pop it as central as possible. Uh, so it's a little bit hard to see in these containers for me but I've managed to get it nice and central. So I'll just show you that again. Just pop the glue dot on the base of the wick and take off the other side. Make sure it's nice and straight and then get it central into your container and then make sure it's well stuck down. So take your wick centering tool after that and just get it nice and central and then just pull it through into the little nick in there. Now my wax has melted all the way through, I'm just gonna double check the temperature here. I don't want it to be too hot. I'd like it to be somewhere around the 60 degrees mark. Um, I'd also like to mention that I forgot to tell you I have some cream dye here as well. Um, I forgot to pop it in the first section of the video, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, but we do have some cream dye and it looks like we are too far over. Um, so I'm just gonna pop my wax to one side before I do anything else with it. So now my wax is cooled, I'm just going to pop it back over here so you can see it. There is no heat on this hob, just to let you know. Um, so I'm just going to pop in some of the cream dye. Now I want these candles to be nice and creamy. So I'm going to pop in two to three grams of the cream dye. Um, just put little pinches in and just see how you feel. But I'm popping in around two to three grams of cream dye just to make it nice and creamy. And then I'll give it a really good stir around and just make sure that the dye melts all the way through the wax and I've got a nice even coverage. And I'd also just like to mention that the temperature of this wax at the moment is around 55 degrees. Uh, so that is the perfect temperature to be adding any fragrance and any dye to your wax. 
So moving on to my fragrance oil, I'm just gonna pop my wax melter onto my scales here, just so that I can measure it out properly. So I have 800 grams of wax in this pot. So I'm going to pop in 70 milliliters of this fragrance oil. Now that is less than 10% and the soy wax can hold up to 12% because soy wax does naturally hold fragrance and dye but it does need slightly more fragrance loading than paraffin. So you can pop a little bit more in if you want. I just don't want these to be too strong. So 70 milliliters it is for me and I'll give it a really good gentle stir around just again to make sure that it goes all the way through the wax and we don't have any blank spots. So now I'm feeling pretty happy about the stirring and everything else in this wax. So I'm just gonna double check the temperature here and see where we're up to, because I don't wanna be pouring this uh, wax any more than 55 degrees. So I'm just gonna double check to make sure that it is a good temperature. And I'll show you where we're at. So we are just under the 55 degrees mark, which is absolutely perfect for me. So I'm gonna get on with pouring. So for the first pour, just simply pour straight into the gap there um, and only pour part the way up just in case um, because sometimes with different container waxes uh, you do always need to have a little top up just in case there are any little sinkholes um, but the soy co container wax that I'm using today is formulated to only require a single um, pour but it does depend you might need a small top up so only pour part the way up now leave them to set for half an hour before coming back and having a double check to make sure you've got no sinkholes. So my candles have had just over half an hour to set and as you can see I have got a few little sinkholes here. Um, so these candles do need to cool quite slowly um, so don't run the risk of trying to cool them too quickly because you could cause frosting and adhesion problems. So I've just reheated my wax and I'm going to pour it just a little bit hotter than what I did my first pour. Um, and that will give me a nice smooth coverage on the top. Um, and then I'm gonna be leaving my room nice and warm. There are no drafts in this room at all um, because any small change in the ambient temperature uh, whilst the candles are cooling can create big changes um, with your candles, such as the adhesion problems. Um, so yeah, we'll just leave them to uh, cool. So after my final pour, um, I have left these to cool for a good few hours. I'd say around three or four hours these have been cooling now. Um, normally I would leave these overnight, but for the purpose of the video, I just wanted to quickly get them nipped off for you. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how nice and smooth they are on the top. And I'm just going to trim the wick. Now you want your wick to be around five millimeters. That's a nice, safe measurement. Uh, ready for burning your candle but remember not to burn your candle until after 24 hours you don't want to be going in there too quickly and um, so just with my wick trimmers I've just trimmed the wick nice five millimeters just there um, and I'll get my other two done as well and then they'll be ready to uh, pop on display but I won't be burning them until tomorrow